Welcome back. This is Rise and Shine. And if you're just joining us, more conversations are coming to you this morning. Of course, we want to look at the fact that the race for the, se the seat of the Senate president has already started and is getting heated up uh, with every passing day. To have this conversation with us this morning is Barrister Imoa Akban, who himself is a legal practitioner and, of course, a public affairs analyst. This conversation is a steep one. Where are we headed? Who's turn? is next good morning barrister Imo. good to have you in set this morning good morning good morning good morning, good morning. Oh, nice yeah. uh just like we i said it's it's getting worse and worse mm. the pressure and everything like we would say in nigerian parlance getting worse and worse um we have about 11 people that are actually vying for the seat of the senate presidency but what i would like to start from um in this conversation is with the present composition of um, the apex and legislative chambers what does it mean for the incoming government because we see about 59 or thereabouts states being clinched by the apc i think 11 or thereabouts by the people's democratic party if i'm getting my figures correctly but the truth of the matter is we have more um political parties being represented in the senate as we speak as an outcome of the elections that just concluded so the composition, what does it mean for the incoming administration? I think that the 10th Senate is going to be a very robust gathering of um, uh, distinguished senators, especially from the background of the fact that they now come from um, a larger collection of political parties. You have representatives of the Labour, you have um, from the YPP, Yes, you have someone from the YPP. Yes, that's there. one person from the YPP. You know, and then definitely you have majority of the senators from the APC and then naturally from the PDP also. So you're going to have, you know, divergence. If, if the plurality of the, the political parties um, that have thrown them up is anything to go by, then one expects to see a very robust engagement. But um the nigerian polity is more of the same sorts of people coming with different names different platforms i, I believe they're one and the same people but we, we have we have some newbies we have some newbies in the in the senate well yes you have newbies in terms of individuals you yeah. have newbies in terms of for instance for the first time you have someone from the labor party mm -hmm. you know but I'm saying that, you know, the Nigerian political space really doesn't make for too much difference in terms of ideology across party lines. So you have, you have what you call a difference without a distinction. So it's more or less one and the same thing. It's just that um, there are now more party platforms. So one should expect this robust engagement. Mm. But at the end of the day, I don't see this posing as a threat to the smooth functioning and the running of the, the next administration. Um, so to, have... when, you, when you talk about threat now, let's, let's try to break it down. For me, I don't see it as uh, being a threat to the present ad or rather to the incoming administration. But I see it as, because when we even look at the Ninth Assembly, there's a tag on them as being rubber stamp. So we have a situation where we are having more people from different political parties in the Senate make up the composition of the Senate. Will that translate to more productive agendas or bills and all of that? That's what Nigerians are looking for, not necessarily saying that, oh, it's going to be like a threat. Well, yes, that's why I said it's going to be a robust engagement. Um, you are not likely going to have... A replication of what you had with the ninth senate i think the ninth senate was um, just like we have to borrow your words um, was a rubber stamp for the executive it, it became monotonous it became very boring you you almost could tell what decisions the senate would arrive at on any issue that bothered on bills presented by government requests by government you know i think at some point the senate president said look our job here is to ensure that whatever comes from government has a clean bill of health. We get to pass it. You may not have it that easy this time around. For instance, yes, you're not going to have a legislative arm that wants to combat. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have um, 
more refined outcomes in terms of engagement, um, but will that stultify process, that stultify the progress uh, of the administration? No, I don't see that. Uh, I, I believe that if the senators live up to their billing, then everybody should go there with the national interest at heart, get the job done, and get the best decisions for the nation. Uh, not necessarily uh, disagreement for the sake of disagreement, so that it will be said that we there, have, there was an argument yes, on the floor. There was an argument on the floor. We have people who have diverse or divergent Very views good. on any on any on any uh, subject matter. Um, but that at the end of the day, with these engagements, the refined product, which is the decision, should be in the best interest of the country. Okay, so some, something else we look at with regards to this battle is the fact that we are having a tussle between um, geopolitical zones. We are having, um, you know, the North, um, you know, say it's their turn. You know, we're having the Southeast say they should be given an opportunity. The Southwest is saying they should be given an opportunity. So we are, we've also gone beyond, oh, I think I'm a good candidate for the seat of the Senate president. It's also a tussle along geopolitical zones. Um, how they have run so far we do not know if they have stuck to the patterning of geopolitical zones or they just want to insist on it from this you know particular race well um i've had the apc uh, the national chairman say that the the party respects zoning and so is therefore going to abide by zoning as far as the party is concerned mm. Now, if that's anything to go by, especially with the party being the party with the majority of the Senate, then the APC most likely is going to end up zoning uh, offices you know, of the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. um, what is almost agreed now is that the office of Senate President ought to go to the South South. Um, that is, uh, that's, an, that's an ongoing argument. Mm -hmm. um, there are people in the Southeast who think that, oh, this is also the time to allow the Southeast to produce a Senate president because looking at the larger picture, we need to unify the country. You know, this issue of national unity. You now have a president elected from the Southwest, you have a Londoner as vice president. Where does the Southeastern come in the mix, in the picture? Mm -hmm. And so they, they flaunt this um, thing about Southeast and national mm -hmm. unity. So they push for inclusiveness. And inclusiveness. Uh, but beyond that, you know, these are political decisions. Um, you can't achieve balance in a political setting if you don't look at what the trajectory has been, mm -hmm. if you don't look at what, um, what the variables are. Uh, you have a president who is uh, president-elect, who is from the Southwest. Um, naturally, since the advent of democracy in 1999, the return to democracy in 1999, the South is, in fact, every state in the South is, has produced a Senate president. They've actually taken turns yeah. to produce Senate presidents. I mean, it was as if it was an arrangement. So the first one comes from Abia, the next one from Enugu, and so on and so forth. So he went around the entire Southeastern state. It was as if it was their exclusive preserve to hold on to the Senate presidency. Now, that argument can't hold water now. Because you can't be talking about national unity, national cohesion, and all of that, and you say the only way this country could be said to be looking in that direction is when you cede the position of the Senate President of the South East. Um, the South South, since the return to democracy in 1990, has never produced a Senate President. So that argument would be a stronger argument because, um, talking about inclusiveness, uh, we lay the golden egg, so we also should be allowed that opportunity to also produce uh, the Senate president. Uh, I really do not understand what the clamor for Senate presidency from the north would be, given that you know the incumbent yeah. is also from the north. I mean, uh, reasoning should show that um, it should come down south. When it comes down south, then we can now micro zone to the south south block where you have. Um, people who are eminently qualified okay so let's even let's even come back a bit um i know that when we talk about um zoning and um the whole um talks about um 
fairness, equality, and uh, inclusivity. Um, the likes of uh, Ojo Zokalu Uyai has mm -hmm. been one that has been on the front burner pushing and he came up with um it's my turn, it's my turn. too mm -hmm. uh we have the only woman who has also via you mm -hmm. know shown interest uh miriam onuoha i think i got that correctly yes. now uh who has come out to say all you men step down give it to me because i'm a woman i'm a mother i have the capacity to carry on oh, okay so that's for, for house, of house of reps now i'm sorry i beg your pardon but but we have the likes of audio zokalu coming out we have a couple of other people that have come out also and um we were talking to somebody the other day and they said look even the issue of um power tussle mm -hmm. it can be given to you a la carte and when we talk about south south we have um, um, it's called the minority group in South South. So we have the likes of Gospel Obura Pabio. And if we look at it, we've not really heard him come out to say anything. And that's what we call lobbying in all of this. So how do we now say that? Okay, so because we, we have want people it, that I, want to go yes, for we that. we should just thing. go give them. Mm. When they are, we are not even hearing them say anything. What well, the the office of senate president is what is called primus inter pares. the senate president is the first amongst equals amongst his colleagues because in 109 senators um are the same they are they are, they are on equal footing they're on equal ranking but amongst themselves they elect a leader who is first amongst equals um Election for Senate Presidency is not a plural election. For instance, I'm not going to vote. I would desire to vote. I crave to vote. You know, but I'm not going to vote because I'm not a senator. Mm -hmm. Now, there are people who now feel it is my turn because the president-elect also rode on that toga mm -hmm. and got elected. You know, forgetting the fact that the president-elect actually had a basis upon which to push the, it is my turn to go. So Ojo others may not be that. Basis? Others may not be that lucky. So it is not just a claim for the sake of a claim. Mm -hmm. um, I do not understand from where the southeastern bloc would want to uh, raise an argument that is strong enough to displace the south south bloc in the battle for senate president seat. Um, Yes, you may be right that Senator Gosul Akwabio, who is from the South South, for instance, uh, former governor of Akwabim State, and I think the first person in our democracy who assumed a principal leadership position on his first, uh, uh, first his advent on the scene as a first timer on the floor of the Senate. He became minority leader of, of, of the Senate. The first time, in fact, the Senate had to suspend its rules, bend over backwards to elect him, and then immediately he was elected. The Senate restored its rules, so you can't even be a Senate president if you are a first timer. Um, Ojo Zakalo is not a first timer, Senator Kwabio is also not a first timer. But you see, Senator Kwabio is not the kind of person who will tell you it is my turn. We don't all have to claim it is my turn, uh, but like you said, it is about lobbying. It's about talking and engaging with the other 108 senators. Mm -hmm. So it is not an open campaign. You're not going to print posters. You're, going to, you're not going to go on radio, uh, you know, canvassing for votes. Mm -hmm. So it is about lobbying. So it is not about how much noise you make. Uh, it's a surprise that even though you don't hear Senator Kwabio talk, there is a lot that is being said in his favor. There is a lot in the mix which gravitates towards the fact that he is favored uh, to emerge as an excellent president, not just because he's a South to South man. Even if you decide to throw, uh, throw the contest open, allow people from the Southeast, allow uh, people even from the North, you know, to get into the fray. Mm -hmm. I, as a person, believe that um, Senator Kwabio would win the elections, given his pedigree, given his um, track record, of achievements as a governor of a quiet state, you know, who left office in 2015, given his achievements as a first time on the floor of the Senate, and then also given his achievements as a minister of the Federal Republic, and then given his personal credentials politically. Don't also forget that the masterstroke which saw to the emergence of um, 
Asiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu as the flag bearer of the APC on June 8th was the fact that Senator Kwabi withdrew from the presidential race. So is that more like a that compensation was, that, that was, to him now? No, not, not a compensation. That was a master stroke. So if Senator Kwabi took that decision one year ago to step down for Asiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu, um, it's either he's a prophet or he had some insight that such an opportunity would arise. But we've, so we've seen that Bola Metinibu has said he does not have any favorite candidate for the seat of the Senate president. No, no, we're, we're not saying that the president elect should award that position to Senator Kwabi. Because it sounds more that, like a bad game here. No, mm. we're saying that. Because I stepped down for you, so I become the next We're saying that president. all the things being put on the table, all issues being put on the table and considered, even if you're going to have a plural election with contestants from every region of the country have somebody whose track record whose political visibility is probably higher and thicker than that of any other contestant mm. added to the fact that he's also from the south south so but just to you know give, make allow this conversation to rest because we are finally battling behind time you've explained to us that although some people are not making the much noise it's like not the likes rest of... until you have a senate president mm. when the senate is inaugurated in june mm. so you're saying that he's actually doing a lot of groundwork Oh, but, but, but you see, you, you have not heard from him directly. But we, we, we have all... We have so, so then we're we just all living with speculations that he might as well not be interested we, in we, the seat. We, we know, exactly, we know, yes. We know what is going on. Well, like I said, you know, this is not an open contest where you have um, people coming to print posters and flag off campaigns. Mm -hmm. um, many of the others whom you also say are jostling for these positions may not... But there's a lot of horse trading going on. There's a lot of engagement going on behind the scenes. There's okay. a lot of lobbying, I can assure you. And there's right. a lot of lobbying going on. And because it's going to be a decision of um, senators-elect to decide who their leader is, who their president is, um, you really don't need all the noise. But I tell you that um, when the push comes to show, we'll, we'll see what the results will be. So in terms of expectations and, you know, having a Senate president there, we, we've talked about the fact that we are bothered about the rubber stamp, you know, nature of how the, you know, 10th Assembly and you know, even other assemblies have been, you know, in time past. With the new crop of people that we have in the House and even those vying for the seat of the Senate president, what's your expectation with regards to policies, bills and the likes um, in the coming administration as we bring this to a close? Well, we we'll agree that um, there will be a, a, a lot more robust engagement. It's not going to be business as usual. It is definitely go, not going to look like... I'm not sure that Nigerians would desire to have another opportunity of replicating what the Ninth Senate represented. I, I'm not sure. I think even in the APC, I'm not sure that there are many people who are very excited that you had a, 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 a leadership in the National Assembly, especially in the Senate. The House of Reps was a lot better. The House of Rep is more representative of what the Nigerian society looks like, not the not the Ninth Senate. You know, um, even without much stress, you could say where the decisions of the Senate would tilt to. So yeah. long as it had to do with government, the Ninth Senate was well in advance pro-government on almost every issue, whether it came to uh, obtaining approval or obtaining of loans mm -hmm. as many times as the federal government wanted, he got it. If I looked at Steve, it was even the senator who was beckoning on federal government to say, look, come get loans or come apply for loans or whatever it is. So I think that this um, 10th Senate will be a better uh, floor to have issues that pertain to Nigeria and Nigerians debated to the extent that um, we have the best uh, options, we have the best results for the country. All right, thank you so much, uh, Barista Imokwan, a uh, legal practitioner and also a public affairs analyst. Thank you so much for your time. Um, on the grounds of um, what's happening in the country, we hope for a better country. We hope that um, the Senate will live up to its expectation. A lot is expected from the 10th Assembly as we speak, and we hope that we find that happen for us as a country, even as we continue to forge ahead. That's where we get to end our show this morning. It's been a wonderful ride from 7 up till this moment. My name is Janice Cobham. We'll see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye. My name is Uyai and I can thank to everyone who was a part of the show, everyone who called in from all over the country to make their contribution. Special thanks to Sonny from Edo State. Uh, also, thank you to our production crew. Let's do this again tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of our programming and the rest of your day. Rise and shine.